So this section is on viruses and as well as other viral particles. And we're actually going to be looking in our textbook out of chapter 14 and the first section out of chapter 13. So if you're interested in going in and reading this section and taking a look at it, um, the, this first video is basically from section 1 of chapter 13. So it's the general characteristics of viruses. Now, when you, you've studied viruses before, hopefully you studied that viruses were actually not considered living and they're not part of any living kingdom of classification. So viruses consist of a capsid, which is a protein coat, um, and a nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA, but not both. So they don't, they aren't made out of a cell, and they only have those two things, no cytoplasm, no ribosomes. They don't have any endoplasmic reticulum, no Golgi, no other membrane-bound organelles whatsoever. So scientists typically refer to them as obligate intracellular parasites. So let's break down what that means. Obligate, because they require a living host in order to reproduce. Intracellular, because they live inside of cells. And I'm using the term live loosely. And parasites, because they benefit, but the host cell is usually harmed. So they're not living, they're metabolically inert particles, okay? They can't perform any of life's functions on their own. So they don't metabolize, they don't maintain homeostasis. They can evolve, okay? But they don't really respond to any stimuli in their environment. So the only thing that they can do is re reproduce, but they gotta have a whole cell to do it. So let's learn a little bit about the structure of a virus. So the first characteristic that we can use to classify viruses is shape. It's determined by the arrangement of what are called capsomeres. Um, and these are kind of repeating subunits um, that would make up the external portion of the virus. And so they can appear as either isometric or what we would call spherical. And I will typically use the term spherical in class. Um, which is composed of very flat surfaces of equilateral triangles. If you look at um, this diagram off to the right hand side, you can see right here that there's a green triangle, right? And then there's another green triangle and another green triangle. If you were to able to count that whole thing, there's 20 of those um, in this particular image. And that 20 sided <coughs> virus is called an icosahedron or we refer to it as icosahedral as an adjective, okay? Now, another way um, that viruses can be shaped is helical, which is a little bit more spiral shaped. And so that example is this guy right here. So right here, see how it spins? Kind of like the DNA double helix. When you actually look at it, it almost looks like it might be rod-like in appearance. Um, but really, when we look at the nucleic acid and the way those capsomeres are, are going around, they actually wind around the nucleic acid. The filamentous type are the rod-type shaped ones, and that's this one right here. Even though it's kind of bent up on itself, that's still considered rod shape. It does not wind around the nucleic acid like the helical does. Then complex doesn't look like either of the other three, basically. So it's having an iso or isometric head, meaning it's kind of got like um, nice flat sides that gives it more of a geometric shape. Um, but then it's got like a head and then a long sheath or tail involved with it. So we're going to talk about those a little bit more specifically here in a minute. But when we look at the actual structure of that virus, okay, we know that it could have different shapes. But the nucleocapsid is basically the capsid packed tightly with the nucleic acid. That's the basic viral structure, okay? It's the, the, the most basic that we can look at. So on the nucleocapsid, there are what are called attachment proteins or spikes. We typically refer to them as glycoproteins, okay? Glycoproteins is the term that you're going to want to become familiar with because a lot of times those glycoproteins um, are really important in research and understanding how viruses actually attach to their host cells so that way they can get in to understand mm, for us 
how they infect us. So some may have what is called an envelope, not all, but some. And that envelope is on the outer surface and it's composed of a lipid bilayer. Hmm, where have we heard of a lipid bilayer before? Hmm, sounds like a cell membrane, doesn't it? When you look at the pictures at the bottom of the page, hopefully you're recognizing a portion of the structure there that looks similar to the lipid bilayer or cell membrane of a host cell. Well, that's because they actually get their envelope from their host cell. They literally rip part of the cell membrane off with them. So these viruses are then termed enveloped. Those that don't have that outer lipid bilayer are called naked. Okay, yes, it's a scientific term. So when we look at the diagrams down at the bottom, take a look at this one. This is a naked icosahedron or spherical virus. It looks like this if it has the envelope. Here is a naked helical virus. Here is a enveloped helical virus. Okay, so we're going to test this out a little bit. First, we got to look at the structures. Okay, so this is an example of influenza virus. And influenza virus is one of those spherical icosahedral viruses. And so at the very, very center of the diagram, we can see a nucleic acid. Again, it could be either DNA or RNA, not both. Okay, um, <coughs> the next layer in, and actually what I want to do is, let's use green, um, it, this structure here, this is all capsid. Really nice diagrams there, Mrs. Learned. So that's the capsid. Okay, um, we've got then the envelope that runs its way going all the way around the outside and see how it's kind of got a cutout there for us. So I'm going to kind of come back over here because that's the envelope, right? And then we've got, <clears throat> ooh, let's go with magenta. That sounds interesting. Um, those glycoproteins or those spikes. So this is an example right here. This is another example, right? Another example. So you can kind of, if you want to, go through and kind of color code these if you want to a little bit. You don't have to, but those are the glycoproteins, okay? Um, all right. Now, would you consider this virus here enveloped or naked? Hopefully you said enveloped. And then what shape is it? It's the spherical one. Okay, let's take a look at this guy. What do you think, enveloped or naked? Hmm, tough one. Do you see a lipid bilayer? Hmm, this one's naked, okay. What shape is this one? Be careful, this one's tricky. Hmm. First, I got to find the nucleic acid, right? Let's go ahead and let's use red. The nucleic acid is this guy right here, mm -hmm. winding inside. So where is the capsid? Because that's oops, because that's the next hard one. The next is the the capsid are these guys. Okay. That's the capsid. So it's winding around. And if I follow the capsid, that is creating a helical shape. So in this example, we've got the spikes being out here around the outside surface. Okay. All right. Now, Let's try another one. Is this virus enveloped or naked? Well, hopefully you got that this one's naked. I don't see anything that looks like a lipid bilayer. In what shape is it? Hmm, it's kind of icosahedral up there. Be careful, because it also has that long tail or sheath. This one is complex, okay? You should know the difference between these. So when I look at this one, here's the capsid up here around the outside, OK? 
Okay, you want me to color code these? Probably should, Mrs. Learned. Let's use yellow. Okay, ooh, this guy all the way around the outside. That's my capsid, right? You can see the nucleic acid on the inside there, right? Here's my nucleic acid. Then I've got um, the collar, okay, the neck collar and sheath that makes up that whole tail, okay? And then we've got the tail fibers. That's these guys, okay? Now the tail fibers are very important to this type of um, this type of virus because this is a complex virus. It's called a bacteriophage. It is a virus that's specific to infecting bacteria. Fortunately, even though they kind of look like UFOs, they don't actually infect eukaryotic cells. They don't infect us at all. Um, they only infect bacteria. So um, basically, the way their structure is designed is these tail fibers attach to the bacterial cell wall and then the, this tail um, literally acts like a hypodermic needle. This base plate punctures, it like goes boom and comes down, punctures the cell wall, and it in, literally injects the nucleic acid. So the rest of this entire structure is left outside the bacterial um, cell. So it's kind of interesting the way it works. All right, that is it for today.